Hi everyone, this is Gail from Gail Julie Makes. I hope you're all doing well. Now I'm back with another alcoholic background video today. I've got my UPO paper ready. Now I'm going to do the lift ink process again. So I'm bringing in some of my favourite colours. I've got Citrus by Ranger and I've got Paul. I am going to be making great use of a pink by Lavinia Stamps today as well. So um, hoping to make a background perfect for stamping on too with our Lavinia Stamps. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to start off with a peach bellini background like i showed you previously um, i'm just going to give that a bit of a a rub into the middle obviously you don't have to do this it just means if i've got um a focal point that i want to use i mean i said i'll probably do flowers for this one but i may decide to do a fairy so i'm just getting it down anyway we'll see what happens okay and then um, i'm going to start adding the colors down so i think i will add a bit of peach bellini around the edge Also, it's fine if we've got some going over the peach area because it's peach anyway, so that's pulling nicely. And then I'm going to start bringing in a little bit of the pink around the edge. Okay, so these are new inks that I've just received, so I have shaken them before using. Um, so obviously they've been travelling, but it's a good idea to shake them anyway. Make sure they've not got any... Any, especially with your mixatives and things, make sure that all the micro hasn't sunk to the bottom. So, um, okay. So we've laid some of that down. I'm going to bring in some of the blending solution now. See what I mean? It's it is so vibrant when you get that. It's almost it's basically fluorescent. I would say when you get your blending solution down. What I do like is I like the colour that it leaves as uh, when it kind of pulls in its darkest areas. I love that colour. Like these sort of areas which i've just <laughs> just poured that on now for some reason my tip seems to be putting out a lot more ink than i want it to so i don't know what's going on there but um anyway i'm going to carry on i'm just gonna get a little bit of that going on and then i'm going to start adding some more colors so i have like i say i haven't really got a plan for this one so we just my tip on the end of this one seems to have split for some reason. Don't know why. I'm just going for it with different colours. I just feel like um, I don't know why. I just feel like the citrus one might go quite nicely with the green, just to you know um, dumb it down a little bit. Right, and then we'll put a bit. Yeah, I don't know why it's uh, why the blending solution is coming out in the way it is. It's just starting to annoy me a little bit now. So try this, try the turning it around technique, guys. See, it's just that just dripped where I didn't want it to drip. So these are the problems you're going to face. Things like this that just get frustrating. So yeah, so I'm not not liking this one at the moment. I must admit. So what we're gonna we've got quite a bit of work to do, guys. I'm gonna get some alcohol lift ink on my pad. Okay, and I'm gonna start going in to make some of those sort of cells. Okay. Obviously, it does spread it around a bit as well. You can see, look, it's kind of picking up other areas. So again, that's something to bear in mind. But I am preferring this already, so if you're not liking how it's looking, you can kind of mot. I guess it's mottling it really, isn't it? It's bringing out some more of the cells as well. Okay, yeah, starting to like this area, starting to love this area. So, you know, we're getting there. you just got to have the faith that sometimes it takes a few seconds to do, actually do what you want it to do, I think. So let's get some more going here. Just looks like spreading it around, and but it is the circles and the cells are coming. Okay, starting to love this area now. Really liking this. So yeah, I think the green coming through with the pink looks really nice. So let's get a bit more of that going on. Okay, and we'll start to work on. Some of those areas. 
I'm now call it in comma pad again. And I'm going back in. Okay. So we'll see what happens with those. They should start to become a little bit more like these ones, I think. Right, right so then I'm going to add a little bit of white just around these areas that I want to sort of still keep as a bit of a focal point. So I'm going to add white in there just to let it spread a few seconds as well. And then get plenty of ink on there. And then what we'll do is we'll sort of spread that a little bit. Obviously, I know we're getting those in there, but remember this bit here is going to be, because there's not much ink there, it's going to be really light. So, right, and let's get a bit more white. Okay, get in there. And what I'm going to do, I think, is change my pad again. Um, you do get, a few if you want it to be really you know, how you envisage it, then I suggest, sorry, you can just about see I'm putting the ink on, the alcohol lift ink on there. Be willing to just change a few pads if you don't want to get too much of that colour in certain areas. Okay. There we go. I'm really liking this area down here. So I'm going to get a bit more pink in the corner. On this corner let that spread a little bit and then we'll also get some of the green let that do its thing and obviously be careful because it will go a little bit muddy and we'll, oh, don't drop your blending tool on it so and we'll get a bit more of the alcohol lift ink put a little bit of the Blending solution on there. There we go. And then we'll spread it around a bit. Okay, so I'm going to whiz this on a little bit, guys. Um, just speed it up a little bit, but so you can still see what I'm doing. And add a little bit of music to it. I will maybe stop every now and again just to show you something that I think is useful. Uh, but I hope you enjoy it.
and then some gold. Now when you use the gold with the alcohol lifting, it, um, <clears throat> sorry, with the um, blending solution, you'll notice it doesn't really sort of blend as well. It's basically because it's got mica in it, so it will move the mica around, so it kind of can look a bit sludgy sometimes, but once it's sort of dry, it should be fine, but it can just look a bit strange when you're moving it around a little bit. Yeah, so... Um, you might you might sort of dampen it down a bit like that you tamper it down I suppose you'd say um, you could do this drag effect as well which um, can look quite nice so you're dragging the blending tool down a little bit kind of adds a different element to the rest of the piece As Tracy always says, you can just go on doing this forever and ever, <laughs> but you've got to stop somewhere. Um, I like the way the magenta there has gone into the, it's, it's found some gold, the gold's spreading around the outside of it, that's a nice effect. So, I think I'm going to leave it there, and I'm going to pull it. So, in an ideal world, I would put my lids on, but let's just get this done. So I'm just going to tamper down. Oh, just stop some of that flow. I don't want to spread too many different colours in other places though. So, And then we're going to use our lift ink across the top. Okay, remember we need our, <clears throat> our brayer. Brayer it down. As you know guys, I never wait for things to dry. So, um, And then I'm going to pop my A5 over the top. And give it a rub and we'll see what we've got. Ready for the big reveal? Make sure I've got it down the bottom and here we go. There we go. Quite a dramatic piece. It's actually come out darker in the middle than I thought, but that's it's still light enough to to actually um to actually get a fairy in there so we're okay let's just zoom it out a little bit sorry stuff everywhere very messy desk now so that's what it's turned out like guys so quite pleased with that one very different to my other ones as i say you kind of get an idea in your head and that one was really just a play just to get lots of different colors around the edge probably if i'd have had more time i would do smaller cells so i get more blending solution there take a bit more time over it but um you know it is what it is so We've we've had it. We've we've done this in the time that we've been given. Didn't want it to be so a really long video. So happy with that. I can get some stamping done on that, and um, hopefully be able to show you at the end of the video what we've done. Okay, and this is the finished piece, guys. So um, I've just basically gone in with Monovinia stamps, stamping over the top. Um, so I've gone in initially with the um, acetate mask to make a bit of a mountain in the background, and I did a bit of a hill at the front here. I've done my usual stenciling technique of, um, you know, inking through a stencil to give the, the sort of paving a, an interesting look, like it's been um, lit up and reflecting some of the flowers. Um, then we've got the vine stamp coming in there. Um, I think that one's the thistle one, actually. Um, and um, just one of the hairs and the back colony as well. And what I've done for the moon is I've just gone over that with a little bit of... Uh, first of all, I used a moon mask to get the sort of darker um, mulberry around the edge. And then I've used pan pastels to colour over the background just to sort of, you know, really pull that moon out a little bit more. Because it was the, the colours weren't quite right where the alcohol ink had sat. So I um, used a bit of pan pastel to get that colour and tone right. And then I've just gone round the edge with um, is that mulberry or... 
I can't remember which colour it was now guys, sorry, but um, just gone round the edge with another purple and just that brings it all in together for that sort of focal point in the middle. So I hope you like the finished result. Um, also did a bit of star stamping, obviously the glitter as well, you've got to have a bit of glitter on there, haven't you? So um, obviously I know I haven't done the whole process because I didn't do the stamping, but I wanted to keep the video fairly short and be more about the actual base of your background um, because, you know... A lot of people I know struggle with the alcohol ink backgrounds, but it just goes to show what you can go. You can go from something that, I mean, I thought it was quite garish at first when I started it out. But then as I went through, I was quite pleased with how it ended up as a background. And then it's kind of considering how you can use that on your final piece, because obviously when you lift it with the alcohol lifting, it's going to have those lighter tones. So, you know, that can be quite disappointing as well if you want that really vivid colour. So you could stamp on the Upo. But um, you're going to have to do that with archival ink and it, it takes an awful long time to dry, I find. And I just find I can't get accurate stamping. That's me personally. You may be brilliant at it. If you are, then go for it. But um, I prefer to just lift it off. And the sort of colours are quite nice anyway. You know, they I think they lend themselves to stamping something like this anyway because they're not too overpowering in the background. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do give it a thumbs up because that'll help spread it around YouTube a bit more. And um, please do consider subscribing to my channel. Top left there is my profile picture. If you hit that on the bell and all notifications, that'll let you know whenever I've got a new video coming out. And bottom left there is another video I think you might be interested in. So I hope you get some crafting in this week, guys. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.